Thank you so very much, Nandini Ji, for this beautiful uh, introduction. Uh, Your Holiness, the Most Venerable Puja Swami Ji, thank you so much for the blessings. We really felt them across the screens. I wish we could come to the ashram, but with this COVID, we have to wait. Uh, the Mevlana Hajj uh, Said Salman, thank you for your beautiful message and blessings as well. And the Reverend uh, Paul, uh, Father Paul uh, Munji, divine and beloved Sadviji, thank you for including me in this program. And all the venerable saints, spiritual leaders, colleagues from uh, civil society organizations, of course, my own very dear colleagues, Dr. Yasmin and Dr. Somia from, UNI from UNICEF and WHO, who will certainly have a more uh, uh, distinct, a scientific way of uh, helping us, enlightening us on this very topic. But of course, I'm very privileged to be uh, part of such a platform with eminent saints and speakers and scientists. Uh, I'm sure, of course, that when Puja Swamiji started uh, co-founded Jiwa, trying to convince people to wash their hands and keep their environment clean. It was probably not the most easy thing in, the, uh, in those days, but like many initiatives that seek to change people's behaviors, it, it is always very challenging to, to convince people to change the way they, they do things or to tell them that the simple action of washing hands would ward off half of the diseases in their lives. Ironically, it has taken uh, a giant enemy such as COVID-19 pandemic to force the world, the nation and individuals at family level to reposition hand washing right at the center of the strategies to, for us to stay alive as a community, as individuals. And I know that, uh, of course, from uh, UNICEF, who has for decades uh, working, been working on this very issue of promoting hand washing, especially to save babies and children, we will hear a bit more. And we have our own scientists from WHO, the World Health Organization. But nonetheless, because UNFPA works with uh, women's and children's uh, and girls' health, I will say a few words on the linkages between hygiene and, um, and, and women's health. Already, I can refer to the mid 1800s when a, a famous uh, a British doctor rather made himself famous because he established a, a direct linkage between the habit of hand washing of doctors in the maternity wards when they left one patient and moved to another and the rate of infections and the deaths of those women after, immediately before or during uh, and after birth. So he saw that if he instituted just that simple method of hand washing, when you're finishing the one patient going to another, that the maternal postpartum infections dropped and consequently the, the, the deaths of babies and women also reduced. And so, but where are we now in India today? The total contribution of, um, of infections, uh, postpartum infections uh, after childbirth, uh, rather, uh, that's what I want to say, is about 10%, a full 10% of all maternal death could be averted at, at the hospital level uh, after childbirth if doctors and, and midwives could wash their hands. What about girls? I said, I'll speak about girls as well. This is a population group that often gets particularly and neg negatively impacted by poor hygiene and lack of clean water, especially starting at their puberty age. Why is that and what happens? We have, about, we have millions of girls around the world missing school every three, uh, every month between three and five days during their menstrual period, because they are, they are not able to participate in outdoor activities, which includes school or playing with their friends with dignity because they have no water or sanitation facilities and supplies like sanitation pads 
to, to help them, you know, feel confident to come out. According to the Indian uh, Family Health Survey, about one third of all households do not have access to clean water on their premises. And for that reason, we have as many as 23% of girls dropping out of school upon reaching poverty. In families where water is not available, we also see the burden of women and girls increase. Uh, girls often arrive at school very late because they are busy trying to supply water for, for the families. Their education is compromised, employment opportunities and productivity affect. And the list of course goes on. A, a very natural occurrence just as menstruation for girls which should be celebrated as an integral part of their womanhood, ends up instead being a, a curse because it is an obstructor to her ability to fulfill her God-given talents and to participate and to belong to her community. So you may ask, what is UNFPA doing to promote hand washing and sanitation habits? In our, all our programs, UNFPA raises awareness and encourages the practice of hand washing, most especially among health providers in maternity wards, but also at the community level. We concretely, in the states where we have offices, we have district-based technical health personnel regularly visit health facilities and work with health workers, encouraging them, involving them in, uh, in, in, in adopting technical skills as simple as hygiene practices and washing hands. We also support in large scale the, the government scheme uh, for young people called ASK, known as RKSK uh, through our life skills education program, uh, which a few other UN agencies have like UNICEF and UNESCO in and out of school. And that includes a very strong component on hygiene. During the COVID response right now, we have joined hands with the Ministry of Health, with our state offices in campaigns to promote COVID appropriate behaviors, uh, which of course, uh, hand washing is at the center. And during disaster, to name just a few, we provide dignity kits to women and girls, which include soap, sanitary pads, and other hygiene items. And these help them to really participate and cope with emergencies in a very dignified manner. In conclusion, I would just remind us of very practical aspects to improve sanitation and hand washing. As the, the, the Mevla Nasaid was saying, what is it that we're doing concretely? What can be done? I think that if governments would prioritize resource allocation for clean water and sanitation facilities in all schools and health facilities already, that would go a long way. If we could include appropriate hand washing practices and performance as a performance indicator for, the, for all healthcare personnel, we could ensure that counseling on correct hand washing technique continues to be part of frontline community uh, health workers such as An Anwagardis and, um, and ASHAs, uh, not only during COVID, but even beyond, we will need that to continue. And lastly, but just naming a few, as I said, involving women in all decision-making at the household level, at community level, when it comes to matters of water resources. Most venerable holy, holiness and uh, distinguished participants, women bear the brunt of reproductive role in the family by their own natural God-given role. But it's not only when we speak of reproduction, it's not just in childbearing, but it's only also to pass on and enforce values and culture and traditions from generation to generation. So if we only focused on women and girls primarily, we are sure to succeed in the campaign for hand washing behavior and improve sanitation. It is high time we saw women and girls as agents for positive change. Thank you very, very much, Daniel Bhatt.